act of selection, we're just putting our cursor on the map and we're selecting in this way. We can do this by kind of tracing a rectangle or a polygon or any of these shapes here. This example here shows a shape that was tr traced in, in green by clicking on two different corners, and that would be an example of a rectangle. And in this case, we're selecting the states that basically have any portion of them within this rectangle here. And we can see the states that were selected were these three states here. Um, when you're doing selectable layer, the default is that anything that passes through this rectangle will be selected. So if we're selecting capitals and cities and interstates and states and counties, anything within this green rectangle of any of these different layers will be selected. So we've selected a bunch of counties here, we've selected three different states, we've selected all these interstates and not just the part within the state, but everywhere those interstates run, and we've selected the two capitals that are within there. However, if we click off these other things, and for example, we just leave the states checked, then when we draw this rectangle, we would only select on the states layer, and we would only see these three states being selected. So if we're making a um, new selection, we would just do this drop-down menu for selection type and say we want to start a new selection. Sometimes we select some polygons, and then in another part of the map, we want to select some different polygons. So we can add to the current selection, by, by choosing this instead of making it a new selection. Sometimes we want to remove one, maybe we accidentally grabbed one, we would remove from current selection, click on that one polygon and it would go away, and, and so forth. So we have all these different options, including clearing our current selection in order to just get rid of what we've selected. So let's see, let's take a look at some examples here. So we're going to create a new sele selection, hard sequel yellow, that would be all of the yellow parts that we see here. We're going to add to the current selection hearts equals red. Now we would have all the yellow and all of the red hearts selected. We would add to the current selection hearts equal blue. So now we would have all of the yellow, all of the red, and all of the blue hearts selected. And then remove from selection hearts equals red. So we would um, remove these ones over here. And then we would just have the yellow and the blue selected and so forth. So you can kind of see how we can either um, select new, add to selection, remove from selection, and all those sorts of things by just picking um, what selection type we want when we're doing this uh, when we're doing this sort of selection. So one thing to keep in mind is that some of these selection options are kind of like those booleans we talked about before. So if we're adding to the current selection, that's like an or. If we're removing from the current selection, that's like a not. And if we're selecting a subset from the current selection, then it has to fit both criteria and that's, or both selections, and that's an and. So, um, so that's kind of a helpful way to think about it, I think. So if we wanted to select um, everything in A, and then we wanted to um, not select this part in B, then we could remove everything in B, and we would still be left with what was selected in A. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, we're selecting um, earthquakes in Mineral County, Nevada with a magnitude of greater than 5.0. And so we can select all of the earthquakes within, um, within Mineral County, Nevada. And that's going to select all of these. But then, and this is kind of like where the and comes in, then we want to also, um, after we select it by location, then we want to select from the current location, and then we want to go into the attribute table, and we want to select the earthquakes with a magnitude of greater than 5.0 for what was already selected. That's where the and comes in. So once we've done that, then it's no longer going to select all of these. It's just going to select the ones that are, have a magnitude of greater than 5.0. So um, once we've selected these, um, these different results, it's often advantageous to, we want to save or preserve the set of selected features for use somewhere else. And there's several different ways we can do this. We can make a feature layer. Um, we can make a new layer. We can create a definition query. Or we can export this selected feature as a new data set. This is typically the one I use. So if we select some of our states in the United States or one of our states in the United States, then we can just export that as a new data set. And maybe if we're selected from the... Um, from the states and we've selected the state of Oregon, we just give that a new name like Oregon after we've exported it. So let's take a look at an example here. We've selected a subregion of the United States, the ones that are shown in, um, in orange here, and um, we can make a new layer from that selection. We can make um, a features layer tool. We'll, we'll create a uh, layer from an attribute query. We can use the make layer from selected features. That's another way to preserve what was selected. And um, these new um, 
these new layers or features can be um, can be represented differently than the rest of the map. So that's kind of the advantage. They're behaving like another layer that we would that we would put into the GIS and um, can be used for things like symbolizing in a different manner.